Hello, this is Bernie Mitchell. Welcome back to you, VFI Biosound Network. Today is my first time actually talking about Advent. Uh, a lot of people don't know about Advent because they're not, they're not grew up in the Episcopal Church or Presbyterian Church or United, United Methodist Church. So basically we're going to talk about Advent today and, and what it means, the history behind Advent. But before, before we do that, let's go ahead and start in a word of prayer. God, thank you for your love, God. Your mercy, Lord, your grace, God. Speak to us through your word today, God. Speak to us to be able to get prepared for you know, the coming of your son, Jesus Christ. Also, you know, we pray for Christmas, but also for the second coming of Jesus Christ, too. Thank you for the God. God, speak to us. See your word, God, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. So we're talking about Advent today. It's, uh, it's a very interesting study, actually. Me, personally, I don't know too much about it, you know, as far as just before I started doing this research. I, I know there's Advent candles, because a lot of times I, I school at a Presbyterian church, a long time when I was going in high school. But I didn't really know the meaning behind anything. I just, okay, there's a link lights and candles, and that, that's about all I knew about Advent. But anyways, uh... You know, look, 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 not, not, not every church is, uh, you know, celebrate Advent. You know, a lot of times they do, Episcopalian churches do, uh, United Methodist, Presbyterian churches, Lutheran churches, I think probably Catholics too. But basically, uh, today we, we don't know too much about, you know, Advent, unless you went to uh, one of those kind of churches. If you, if you go to, like, a, you know, some of the God church, like, like, like I go to, of course you're not going to know about that, or, or even a lot of times in a non-denominational church or, or a Baptist church. Yeah, you're not going to really know about too much about Advent, but I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to explain today what Advent's about, the history behind it. It's pretty interesting, actually. So, what is Advent? Advent, of course, is, is books on expectation and anticipation of Jesus' birth and the season, of course, leading up, leading up to Christmas. So, basically it's, it's, basically, it's four weeks leading up to Christmas. And it's just set, again, it's basically just getting yourself prepared for, uh, for the birth of Jesus Christ. And of course, you know, all, the, all the hustle and bustle of the season, everybody's in a hurry, everybody's trying to get Christmas presents and so on. But, you know, basically, you just, you just can't take time out, take a, take a deep breath, basically, just focus on Jesus and then be, be prepared for the, you know, celebrate his birth, right? So, basically, um, let's look at the history behind Advent. So, Advent basically is derived from the, of the Latin word Adventus, meaning coming. Of course, it is uh, a translation of the Greek word parousia. By the 6th century Roman Christians tied Advent to the second coming, second coming of Jesus Christ. It was not until the, actually the Middle Ages that Advent was like, linked to the coming of Jesus Christ first by Christmas, right? So basically, it wasn't to uh, the Middle Ages, basically, is when uh, they started celebrating Advent as far as, you know, the, the few weeks leading up to Christmas and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. So I found that's pretty interesting. So Advent basically is a time of preparation to celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ. And also, you know, it's a time for you know, prepare for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Because, you know, we, we know that it's turned eminent and it's going to come uh, when we're not expecting it, but we got to be prepared. But we know the second coming of Jesus Christ is coming soon. You know, we just hear things being fulfilled. I don't know the exact date. I'm not going to try to predict the exact date because I'd be wrong. Because the Bible clearly says the only, you know, God the Father knows when Jesus come back to get his church, right? So basically, he's got to be prepared. So basically, and basically, Advent is, you know, is, is celebrating that, you know, the preparation for uh, the Christmas season as far as the birth of Jesus Christ, and of course, as, as his first coming to the earth, and the second coming of Jesus Christ when he comes back to get his church, and that's, that's the end of, the, end of the world, of course. So basically, we got to be prepared for that. So basically, um, what are the practices of, of Advent in, in church services? So basically, in church services, uh, the celebrate Advent, they have an, an Advent wreath. Basically, it was uh, first appeared in Germany, 1839. A Lutheran minister came up with uh, the, the Advent wreath, of course, with uh, the candles. So now, now most churches that celebrate Advent nowadays, they have, they have like four candles, and then they have uh, you know one candle for the represents uh, you know the birth of Jesus Christ, and the other candles are, are lit in each week. For example, uh, what the first week of Advent. They have the, the candle, one candle will be, will be lit, and they'll say, they say a prayer, they'll read some verses concerning the advent of the, of the first week of Advent. And then, of course, the second week, you have uh, two candles will be, will be lit, and then uh, it's, it's, you say a prayer, some verses go along with the second week of Advent. And the third week, of course, we have three candles lit, and had more uh, verses, of course, another prayer for Advent. And for the, the fourth week of Advent, will be, uh, all, the four candles will be lit. And then they have uh, the prayer and the uh, verses as well to go along with the fourth week of Advent. And then finally, uh, Christmas, Christmas or Christmas Eve day, Christmas Eve or Christmas, Christmas Day, how, you, how they want to celebrate it, 
that have the uh, all four candles will be lit in addition to the, uh, the, the, the the Jesus Christ candle, like the Christ candle, will be lit too. So basically, there'll be five candles will be lit. So that, but really, uh, the event uh, really really good good idea to get people more involved in the church service and stuff. A lot of times, the church service nowadays people are just spectators. So you know, gotta get people more involved. You know, that'd be good. You know, people can get up there, they read some scripture or like the candles and so on. So it's good to be able to get people involved. You know, everybody's got different spiritual gifts. And, you know, we're not going to just be spectators. We're going to, be, we're going to get involved in church. We're going to call it, you know, get involved in telling people about Jesus Christ. To use the spiritual gifts God has given us, right? So Advent's a good opportunity to be able to get people more involved in, in the church service. Rather than just being, being the, the, the pastor or the worship leader or a choir if it's a choir. But, you know, it's, it's good to be able to get people more involved in the church, church service, right? Instead of having just, you know, like, only like the pastor and just a few people leading the, leading the service. So it's, it's really good, you know, basically, uh, when we are Christians, you know, God, God's given us spiritual gifts, but it's used for His glory. And, and what, you know, you can take a spiritual gifts test, or maybe sometimes you just know what your spiritual gifts are, and to be able to use them to glorify your Savior, Jesus Christ, right? So basically, we gotta, we gotta use our gifts, we, 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 we give them to use them to glorify Him. But basically, uh, let me go to more example here. We're going to go to uh, the Advent, the verses for Advent. You know, there, there are several verses, but I'm just going to share a few verses right now. So basically, for the first Sunday of Advent, would be uh, Isaiah 9, verse 2, and 6 and 7. So I'm going to be reading, let me go read uh, Isaiah verse 9, no, chapter 9, sorry, verses 2, and verse 2 says, The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and light is dawn on those living in the land of darkness. And then we go into uh, verses 6 and 7. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and his prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. So basically, it's basically a, a prophecy foretelling the birth of Jesus Christ, right? Is going to be the, the eternal Father, the mighty God, the wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace. These are these are all titles of Jesus, right? So basically, it's a preparation time to get people ready for the, the Jesus. We have the hope in Jesus. So this is a verse about that. Uh, next one is going to be Romans 13, 1 to 4, 11 and 14. Let me go back into the New Testament now. Romans 13. Okay, Romans 13, 11, 14, it says here, so I'm going to read that for you. Besides this, knowing the time, it is already the hour for you to wake up from sleep. For now, our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, and the daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness, and put on the armor of light. Let us walk with, de with decency, as in the daylight, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual impurity and promiscuity, not in quarreling and jealousy. So I'll put up, it says, I'll be 14 too, but, on, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no plan to satisfy the flesh of desires. So basically, uh, it still focuses on hope, right? The hope of Jesus Christ, of, of the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, we, know, we, know, we, know, we don't know when it's going to come back to get us, but we as Christians we are called to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ, right? Uh, that marks the end of the world. Next we have... The second Sunday of Advent is a time of preparation. I'm going to go to Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5 says, A voice of one crying out, Prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness. Make a straight highway for our God in the desert. Every valley, every valley will be lifted up, and every mountain and hill will be leveled. The uneven ground will become smooth, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will appear, and all humanity together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So it's basically a time to prepare. We have to be prepared for, you know, we, you know obviously this Christmas season we're, we're focusing on the birth of Jesus Christ. We gotta be prepared for that and get our hearts ready for that. But we gotta also be prepared once again for the second coming of Jesus Christ. We gotta be prepared, right? 
Uh, next going to be in Isaiah 11, 1 to 10. Look, Isaiah again, Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11, 1 to 10 says, Then a shoot will grow from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and strength, a spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. His delight will be in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes. He will, ju he will not execute justice by what he hears with his ears. But he will judge the poor righteously, and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with discipline with, from his mouth, and he will kill the wicked with the command from his lips. Righteousness will be, belt, will be a belt around his loins. Faithfulness will be a belt around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, and the leper will lie down with the goat. The calf, the young lion, and the fatling will come together, and a child will lead them. The cow and the bear will graze, their young ones will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. An infant will play beside the cobra's pit, and a toddler will put his hand into a snake's den. None will harm or destroy another on my entire holy mountain, for the land will be as full of the knowledge of the Lord as the sea is filled with water. On that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will seek him, and his resting place will be glorious. So that's basically as found in Isaiah 11, and that's uh, verses 1 to 10, basically a time of preparation. You know, this is about before Jesus, Jesus actually came to earth, so I got to be prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ in the first place. When he comes to earth on Christmas Day, we, that we celebrate Christmas Day. So it's time of preparation once again. The third Sunday, of course, is going to talk about uh, joy. So we're going to go to Matthew 2. Okay, we're going to Matthew 2. Go back to the New Testament now. Matthew 2 is going to be verses uh, 10 11. Okay, let's see verses 10 11 now. Says, and verse 10, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed beyond measure. Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, with his mother, and fallen to their knees. They worshipped him. Then he opened their treasures and presented him with the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So basically, uh, you know, the, 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 the wise men, you know, they're being prepared, and they, 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 saw, they saw Jesus, and they, they, gave, they gave Jesus the gifts of, of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So it's a time of preparation. So you basically, uh, you know, I'm sorry, it's a time of joy. So then they see Jesus, and they had to do this long journey, and they finally see Jesus, and then they have, now they have joy, right? So it's a time of joy. Now we got uh, Psalm 146, 5 to 10. Psalm 146, 5 to 10. Happy is the one whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever, executing justice for the exploited and giving food to the hungry. The Lord frees prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises up those who are oppressed. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord protects the foreigners and helps the fatherless and the widow, and he, but, he, but he frustrates the ways of the, of the wicked. The Lord reigns forever. Zion, your God reigns for all generations. Hallelujah. So we got, we got joy. There's someone about our, our, our righteous king, right? You can take care of those that are prisoners, those prisoners, those that are hungry, those that, that, that need to be, you know, be, they're blind, they, 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 they can have sight. You know, these things Jesus said in there. But, you know, he, he takes care of the, you know, the people, people fed the hungry, fed the, the 5,000, the 4,000. People that are blind, he has sight. You know, he takes care of those people that uh, that that are right are righteous. He takes care of those those are they're going to follow him, of course. So it's a time of, of joy. The fourth Sunday of Advent is as love. So we can go to John three sixteen and nineteen. And obviously, most people know this verse, but we'll read this: John three sixteen and nineteen. John three sixteen to nineteen says, "For God loved the world in, in this way: He gives one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. 
for God did not send his son into the world, but he might condemn the, the world, but that, but that the world might be saved through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This, then, is the judgment. The light has come into the world. People love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. But basically, we have, as, as of course, someone about God's love. God loves us so much. God loves you so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for your sins, to die for my sins, and so we can go to heaven one day. So he loves you so much, right? So that's how you know, we celebrate the, the fourth Sunday of Advent is by love, right? God's love for us. Of course, we need to love one another, too. You know, the, the Bible always talks about, you know, the people world will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So now we have my, my God's love. So, but since God loved us so much, we can love our brothers, we can love our sisters, right? So God gives us the, the power by His Spirit to love others, just like God is loving us. Right? In Isaiah 7, 10 to 14. Go back to Isaiah now. Isaiah 7, 10 to 14 says, Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, As for a sign from the Lord your God, from the depths of Sheol to the height, heights of heaven. But Ahaz replied, I will not ask, I will not test the Lord. Isaiah said, Listen, house of David, is it not enough for you to try the patience of men? We also tried to the patience of my God. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and conceive, have a son, and name him Emmanuel. So basically, uh, it talks about Emmanuel, right? God, God, God's with us, right? That's a sign that is giving uh, that, you know, Israel a sign, but also, also a sign, of course, that about, about Jesus portrays Jesus' birth, right? Because that's what Jesus is. Jesus is actually Emmanuel, God with us. So basically, this verse is a prophecy that talks about, about Jesus' birth. This, uh, all the way back in Isaiah, many, many, uh, you know, hundreds of years before Jesus was born. But now, uh, God's, God's love for us, you know, we have, you know, this love, we have hope. But now, God is with us. Emmanuel, God is with us. You know, and, that, that, and that's basically uh, why, you know, well, we, I, I mean, I think we name our, our son Emmanuel, you know, because it means God's with us. It means, okay, you know, no matter what trial we go through in our lives, that God's, God's with us. God loves us. He's still with us, right? Talk about God's love. Because God just didn't, uh, okay, yeah, you, you, you can go ahead and you gotta live a holy life, but he didn't go to earth to show us how to live a holy life. But Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, actually came to earth to be able to show us how to live a holy life, too. And to put our faith in God. And, you know, to be able to realize that, you know, we can't see ourselves. You know, the, the people that are religious, they want to do all these religious acts and so on, and uh, they want to act be all prideful, but no, God wants us not to be prideful. God wants us to be humble. Humble ourselves before Him. And, and for, us to be, for lift us up at, at the due time. He wants us to humble ourselves before Him. And realize that, yeah, we're sinners. We need, we need God's grace, right? And, you know, we cannot save ourselves. There's nothing, nothing we can do to save ourselves. Bernie Bishop, I can't, I can't see myself. Uh, by my own merit, I'm going to go to hell. But by God, through Jesus Christ, by faith in Him, I go to heaven. So, you know, we, we, that's, that's hope. That's God's love. It has for Bernie Bishop. That's God's love that he has for you guys, okay? So make sure that you got tapped into that love and really that God's with you. God's with you. God's with us, Emmanuel. Uh, that leads us to the last one. There's a, the, the fifth Sunday, or also, of course, could be Christmas Eve, or it could be uh, Christmas Day. It depends on what, what the church service would uh, celebrate Christmas, whether it's sometimes people are celebrating Christmas Eve, or Christmas, Christmas falls on a Sunday, they might do it on a Sunday still. But this one is, of, of course, adoration. And talking about uh, you know, adoration for God, right? So we go to uh, John 1.14. So back in the New Testament again. John 1.14. John 1.14 says, The Word became flesh and took up residence among us. We have observed His glory. Glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So basically, uh, we, we see you know, God it, it came in flesh. Jesus Christ, the living word, became flesh, and living in flesh for us, so we, we may, you know, he take, makes us, you know, takes care uh, of us. He died in our place, so we can go to heaven one day, right? So we gotta, as adoration, we gotta adore God through giving us the Son, Jesus Christ, so we, one day we'll be in heaven with him, with him forever, right? So we gotta adoration. And the uh, last one is gonna be Psalm 96, I'm going to. Oh, the last verse for now. 
Back to Psalm 96. Psalm 96 says, uh, this is a headline that says, King of the Earth. So sing, a, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to Yahweh, praise his name, proclaim his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonderful works among all the peoples. For the Lord is great and is highly praised. He is feared among, above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols. For the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in, in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to Yahweh the glory of his name. Bring an offering and enter his courts. Worship the Lord and the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be shaken. He judges the peoples fairly. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and all that filled it resound. Let the fields and everything in them exult. Let all the trees of the forest will shout for joy before the Lord, for he is coming. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his faithfulness. That's all I want God. How, you know, we, gotta, we got to adore him and worship God because he alone is God. He's not an idol. All these idols and stuff, you know, how people worship them. What, what, what can an idol do? What can a wood do for you? What can a, a piece of a ceramic or plastic do for you? Nothing. But I serve the one true God. And if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you serve the one true God. He is the only one worthy of our, our praise. He is the King of Kings. It's not Triple H, it's the King of Kings, it's Jesus Christ, right? So we gotta worship Him and adore Him. And we know that, you know, the coming pretty soon is Christmas. We've got two more weeks for Christmas. Get, get ready, people. For uh, to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, but also get ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ, and that's why we celebrate Advent. You know, I love you guys. Uh, that's all I have for now. But I hope you understand more about Advent, about being prepared for the birth of Jesus Christ, also being prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So I love you guys. Uh, please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like, and uh, please pass the video on so, so other people can see the video too. And uh, I, 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 I just want to thank you guys for watching the video. I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ already, please, I pray that you give your life over to Him. It doesn't have to be some kind of fancy prayer. Just say, God, I know I'm a sinner. I need Jesus Christ to die for my sins. To come to my heart, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Save me my sins so that one day I'll be in heaven with you forever, God. Take care of me in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord. Amen. So if you pray that prayer or something, something like that, basically acknowledge that you're a sinner, that you need God's grace, you need His forgiveness. And you, you know that now knowledge that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that you die for your sins, that you ask the Holy Spirit to come in your heart, and that you'll, be, you'll go to heaven one day. If you really believe that in sincerity in your heart, that you believe, you believe that for real, and you really pray that for sincerity, that one day you're, you'll be in heaven, you're now a child of God, welcome to the family, God bless you guys. Please, if you haven't already, please subscribe and like, and uh, please continue to get prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ, for the, the, for the celebrated birth of Christmas season also, the sink of Jesus Christ. God bless you guys. Love you guys. Have a great day.